Today we're going to go into discussion into two books, Acres of Diamonds by Russell Conwell, and also another one of my favorites, The Master Key System by Charles Hanel. In the last video, we spoke a little bit about this idea of the light within ourselves reflected like a diamond, multidimensionally and synchronistically so, on the various people, environment, circumstance, and information elements, and connecting them together to produce success. We can also call this resourcefulness. I recommend reading the book, Acres of Diamonds. I've done a discussion on it, and I'll probably do an updated discussion on it. Russell Conwell was an American Baptist minister, storyteller, and writer. He was the founder of Temple University in Philadelphia. One of his famous lectures, in which he reportedly earned somewhere between seven and eight million dollars as he would travel the U.S. giving this lecture, was Acres of Diamonds. Now, he was living the philosophy, and we're going to tie it into Charles Hanel's work. He valued the power of resourcefulness, and he articulated in a story about an individual who owned a farm and sold this farm and went out to look for opportunities to mine for diamonds. Now, what ended up happening was he never found this acres of diamonds. But the individual that actually bought his land, in which he owned, found a rock in which he brought it to somebody. And this individual was quite versed in understanding what diamonds look like and was able to identify it as a diamond. Now, it turns out that the land that he sold had a lot of diamonds in it. And if he had only taken the time to reflect upon, study, and value the land that he was given, then he would have discovered that he was, at that moment, living in his own acres of diamonds. Now, this metaphorical story is very important on our journey. We want to value the idea of resourcefulness. We want to value what we have right now. And as we've been discussing, the diamond is you. And you have the ability to reflect upon the different experiences that you are having each day, the people, the environment, the information, and recognize that all of it is in contribution and in harmony with your vision. We call this keeping our attention on the opportunities at hand. Now, Charles Hanel says, Attention or concentration is probably the most important essential in the development of mind culture. The possibilities of attention, when properly directed, are so startling that they would hardly appear credible to the uninitiated. The cultivation of attention is the distinguishing characteristic of every successful man or woman and is the very highest personal accomplishment which can be acquired. Now, what we want to do is value our mind. As we've been discussing, we've been given the two gifts of speech and mind. Now, Russell Conwell was able to work with those two gifts and keep his attention on those two gifts and translate it over to communication, a story in which he earned seven to $8 million, in which he was able to bring forth a lot of success and contribute greatly as the founder of Temple University and other things that he probably did that I have not studied him to the depth to find out. Now, we all have this ability. We all have our own acres of diamonds. And what we are finding is this is our own creative expression. Some communicate and creatively express through words, some through music, through dance, through innovation. And in the earlier stages of my journey, starting with humble beginnings, I recognized that I really had no choice but to work with what I had. But upon reflection now, I realized that I had everything that I need. And I've had this conversation with many individuals, and they have also, upon reflection of bringing forth their success, realized that everything and everyone and all the experiences that they had 
were the resources, the relationships, the assets, and so forth that were in contribution to bring forth the vision. When they brought themselves to this realization, they now live in a higher degree of resourcefulness, which is another way of saying keeping our attention on. Now, like a seed that gets planted, attention is akin to watering, caring for this seed, which then grows into a plant and into a tree and brings forth fruit which is the different people, the environment, the circumstance, the information. And there's many ways of working with the fruit, enjoying the fruit. A person can turn it into nourishment. A person can turn it into something that they offer to someone, a service to others. The idea behind this is one of the contributing factors to bringing it forth is the cultivation and development of keeping our attention on what is important. Because it is the subconscious mind that does the things that we might not be consciously aware of, brings forth the people, shines the light like a diamond, to bring forth awareness so we can connect the dots between the relationships, the resources, the assets, the opportunities, and whatever it is, which is a result of reflecting from within the mind to bring forth our success. Now, Charles Hanel says, the power of attention can be more readily understood by comparing it with a magnifying glass in which the rays of light are focused. They possess no particular strength as long as the glass is moved about and the rays directed from one place to another. Now, this is very related to how we look at reality from the perspective of the acres of diamonds. If we look at things from many different perspectives, the different resources, the relationships that we have, we'll see the multidimensionality of these aspects of reality, part of who you are, the individual and their contribution to your vision, or the individual elements in contribution to your vision. For example, we spoke in the last video how a few relationships played a big role in my journey, and they continue to do so, which is why I very much enjoy investing in relationships. Because an individual relationship, a relationship with one person, can bring forth multidimensional theater-based components. For example, A client can also be a vendor. A vendor can also be a referral partner. A referral partner can also be a mentor. A mentor can open up the door to connect you with another person who could help you with your operations. That individual can become a team member. They can add some insight from their experiences. They have access to certain assets and resources that could be combined together to bring forth a higher degree of operational yield start a new business, partner in a creative way, and create another revenue stream. Now, these kinds of connections are actual experiences that I've had on my journey. And I will continue to share these stories and experiences all throughout the videos. However, what we want to recognize and really integrate through this conversation today is the power of keeping our attention on the idea of resourcefulness the acres of diamonds, you have everything that you need right now. And we want to look within ourselves as well as look without at everything that we have and see them with a higher degree of value. This will allow us to shine the light from a multidimensional perspective in different slants, in different angles, to be able to see opportunities and connections that we might not have seen before But through the practice of doing this, through representing this and being this, we will work with them in creative ways to bring forth success. So as he says, the power of attention can be more readily understood by comparing it with a magnifying glass in which the rays of sunlight are focused. They possess no particular strength as long as the glass is moved about and the rays directed from one place to another. But let the glass be held perfectly still, 
and let the rays be focused on one spot for any given length of time. The effect will become immediately apparent. So when you shine the light from within and you see the various opportunities, it is then important to see the opportunity that you find all the way till completion. Keep your attention on it. So one of the ways to help us is, I like to work with this Robert Diltz model here. On the top we have our vision, which is our ideal. And the vision is something that we want to see brought forth. We also have the ability to see things from many different perspectives, shine like a diamond. And as a result, we're valuing the acres of resources because we're looking at everything that we have right now. And this aspect, this important contribution of resourcefulness becomes our identity. Now, as we live in this identity more so, which is in alignment with the vision, and integrating to a higher degree the idea of acres of diamonds to this identity as we maintain this ideal state of mind that's one with a vision, what we start to notice upon integration of a belief and value of resourcefulness is that we will have a greater ability to develop certain capabilities, such as, for example, that individual who sold his land and did not look prior to see what kind of resources were available on the land prior to selling, did not cultivate the capability of valuing what they have prior to looking at other opportunities. It's the behavior of looking at what you have right now and figuring out if you can get more yield or if you can combine it in a certain way or look at it from a different perspective to create more operational output, more automation, more lead generation, more conversion to clients, and the aspects that were simplified to a further degree by Jay Abraham in his Three Ways to Grow Your Business Model. He says, you acquire more leads and convert them onto clients. You figure out how to offer more value, which translates over to number two, increase transactional value in exchange for value, thus commanding higher price point. And then number three, coming up with creative ways by reflecting upon the relationships, the resources, the assets, and opportunities that you have to offer existing clients more products or services, either through your own initiative or through partnerships, such as the case with what I do with Iris Reading. We have done many partnerships and as a result of the conversations that we had last week in Fort Lauderdale, as well as the synchronistic nature of what we learned from Russell Conwell, he took the gift of speech and mind and turned it into public speaking expression, which earned him 7 to $8 million. So Paul and I decided that we're going to come out with a public speaking program, and we're going to partner together and work on that over the months to come. Both of us have extensive experience in public speaking. I've done many live events with partnership in Iris Reading. Many of you know the story. Paul has built a very successful business with many instructors, big team, teaching speed reading all throughout the world, private and public workshops. And we both have done influential public speaking as far as business and sales and personal development goes in angles of live events, online events, courses, YouTube videos, social media, and so forth. And this is what we want to value more of. This idea that the existing scope of resources that we have are oftentimes underappreciated, undervalued. What we can do is practice a higher degree of resourcefulness. That's how we look at the last layer of the Robert Diltz model in relation to our conversation by valuing the environment. So what makes up the environment, everything in the outer world? What makes up the inner world, the internal acres of diamond perspective, resourcefulness, which allows us to connect inner and outer and see, maybe not all of them, but one of those opportunities all the way into completion. Now, this reminds me of a story. I shared this this week with somebody else that I spoke with. When I was 21 or 22 years old, we used to go out, we used to go to nightclubs, 
And one of my friends used to bring another friend, and he had this very beautiful BMW brand new, and he had his own condo, and he was 21 or 22 years old. So I asked him, I said, what does he do? And he said, oh, his dad owns a business, and in the back of their house, they have built this office slash uh, workspace in which they do some work for one company. In other words, they have just one client, and they've had this substantial business built as a result of getting many different opportunities from one client. Now, they were in tool and die, so I don't know much about that industry. But as a result of one client and the ability to communicate effectively by learning the process of consultative selling, which is why I recommend reading the book Spin Selling by Neil Rackham, by working with speech and mind, they were able to create many different revenue streams And this was one very successful, substantial business and afforded them a very affluent lifestyle. So, reflecting upon the Robert Diltz model, you have a vision. And the identity is one with the vision, reflecting on the different opportunities, the relationships, the assets, the resources, by maintaining resourcefulness. That's the value and belief you want to identify with more. Through the process, automatically, the behaviors will flow And the capabilities, the behaviors will be ideal more so, and you'll value these aspects that we're communicating about in relation to resourcefulness to look at the environment and work with the environment in creative ways to bring forth success. So Charles Hanel says, therefore, this is a creative age, and the world is awarding its richest prizes to the thinkers. Matter is powerless, passive, inert. Mind is force, energy, power. Mind shapes and control matter. Every form which matter takes is but the expression of some pre-existing thought. Now we want to identify more with resourcefulness, the Acres of Diamonds story, which is why that story was so influential to many people and influential to me. And I go back and revisit it again because I recognize that I could be even more resourceful. This is something that we see as a day-to-day practice. And he says, success is contingent upon a higher ideal than the mere accumulation of riches. And he who aspires to such success must formulate an ideal for which he is willing to strive. Now, the striving really is valuing the acres of diamonds. We have the acres of diamonds. And to reflect accordingly, multidimensionally, on the different aspects of reality in which we can connect and combine them in creative ways to bring forth success. He says, with such an ideal in mind, the ways and means can and will be provided, but the mistake must not be made of substituting the means for the end. There must be a definite fixed purpose and ideal. So we start with a vision, a goal, and we maintain our attention on it, valuing the different opportunities that we have right now, seeing our tasks all the way to completion, valuing our resources, our assets, our relationships, even more so each day. And he says, the value of the subconscious mind is enormous. It inspires us. It warns us. It furnishes us with the names, facts, and scenes from the storehouse of memory. It directs our thoughts, tastes, and accomplishes tasks so intricate that no conscious mind, even if it had the power, has the capacity for. So as a result of practicing resourcefulness, reflecting upon regularly the powerful story of Acres of Diamonds, our mind rearranges and we automatically stimulate the subconscious mind to be able to form the connections and reveal the connections within our awareness. As a result, we're able to maintain the ideal state of mind. As a result, we're able to practice resourcefulness. And upon bringing forth success, the fruits of our thinking... We then see the connects and we repeat this process again and again and again. And we have a greater degree of understanding of the synchronistic nature of the connections and we're able to work with them and see them all the way to success. And now another benefit of doing this, practicing resourcefulness, keeping our attention on what is important, allowing the creativity to express via the subconscious mind. This is done from a place of flow. Maintaining this flow, we practice what he's referring to right here. He says the conscious mind ought to be on duty during every waking hour when the watchman is off guard or when its calm judgment is suspended 
under a variety of circumstances, then the subconscious mind is unguarded and left open to suggestion from all sources. The subconscious mind is then open to the suggestion of fear, hatred, selfishness, greed, self-deprecation, and other negative forces delivered from surrounding persons or circumstances. Now, if you keep your mind fixed on a vision, and you value the resources that you have right now, and you understand and further integrate the concept of resourcefulness by reflecting upon the powerful story of Acres of Diamonds, and recognizing that many people already work with this story of Acres of Diamonds, and you have already done it, because the reality is any success that you've brought forth has been a result of thinking in this way to some shape or form. As you do this, there will be less room for fear, hatred, selfishness, greed, self-deprecation, and other negative forces. And then what ends up happening is you maintain the ideal state of mind in relation to the vision, and you maintain a higher degree of resourcefulness, and your mind doesn't drift, as Napoleon Hill talks about, in outwitting the devil. And so what we want to do is keep our attention on what is in harmony and what is related to our vision. And as a result of keeping our attention and looking at those assets, resources, opportunities, relationships from many different perspectives, which, by the way, is stimulated subconsciously. If you look at anybody who's brought forth success by connecting these elements in a very creative way, you will recognize that they are considered individuals who have a high degree of focus, attention, and concentration. Now, the beautiful thing is it's easier to do this with what we love, which is why I recommend watching the video I did, the Neville Goddard discussion, of thinking from the perspective of love. Because what we love, we automatically have the ability to do this. And so when a person loves the gifts that they're given, the two gifts of speech and mind, they'll be able to work with it in a creative way to bring forth success as a result of practicing resourcefulness. Now let's go ahead and conclude this with an affirmation to further integrate this. You can say, I recognize that right now I'm standing on, living in, and thinking from the ideal state of mind which is a representation of the acres of diamonds. I develop every day the ability to see the different relationships, the resources, the assets from many different perspectives and connect them in creative ways to bring forth success, innovation, operational efficiency, additional revenue streams, or anything that I desire, all guided by my intuition within, which is stimulated by keeping my mind on what is important and the resources that are available, practicing a higher degree of resourcefulness to stimulate my subconscious mind to form the connections. As a result, I'm able to maintain a higher degree of focus and awareness on what is related and in harmony with my vision. I recognize that this gives me the creative ability to understand and reflect accordingly. I also recognize that this is translatable to all areas of my life, as I continue to make valuing the acres of diamonds a higher priority, this becomes a way of being. It becomes my identity that is one with the vision, the value of resourcefulness, and the belief that I am right now on my acres of diamonds translates into ideal behaviors, cultivation of ideal capabilities, which allows me to connect the dots in my environment to my vision within developing a higher degree of faith, loyalty, and conviction to the unseen reality of my vision until the unseen becomes seen. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.